This twisted metalwork might look torturous or decorative, but it once served an essential function that opens our eyes to what was going on during the Protestant Reformation. The ironwork was wrought to hold an hourglass. My sand timer here is not original, but it illustrates how the minister would have turned the glass so that the trickle of sand could mark the time allotted for his sermon. I suspect that my congregation would complain if I preached for longer than 15 minutes. But back in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, a congregation which received less than an hour's exposition would have felt short-changed. Preaching for Protestants was cutting-edge oral communication, the Netflix of its day, a vital weapon in the reformer's arsenal for sharing God's word with the people. The pulpit, and maybe the stand for an hourglass, were made during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. The prominence of the rose on the panel behind my back asserts loyalty to Elizabeth's house of Tudor. Other than the rose, however, the pulpit does not contain many symbols. It has plenty of geometric shapes, but few natural images. The beauty of the woodwork lies then in its simplicity. This is entirely deliberate because in the decades after the Reformation, no decoration was permitted in churches which might be construed as idolatry. Religious imagery that could distract from the worship of the invisible God. Here we have the Christian equivalent to the reticence of the Islamic tradition towards artistic representations of natural objects. Admittedly, there are some figures on St Michael's pulpit which look like dragons, but they appear to be more mythical creatures from classical legends than depictions of any character from the Bible or the real world. The style and function of the pulpit are therefore an embodiment of the Protestant focus on God's word. The clarion cry of the reformers was that people should find faith in Jesus through biblical revelation. The Protestant revolution in the 16th century transformed the layout and contents of churches to serve this end. Out went statues and images. Pictures such as the doom which we examine in another episode were covered up or destroyed. In came plain furnishing that echoed a homely setting. The intention was to encourage the congregation to seek God in their everyday domestic context and not to be distracted by the gaudy medieval ritual which had been superseded. Protestants were, and are, committed to sharing God's word. They opened schools to increase literacy levels and translated the Bible into the vernacular, everyday language which people could understand when they heard it, even if they couldn't read. New translations of the Bible from the original languages were made by the leading scholars of the day. And the invention of the printing press meant that Bibles could be distributed in all shapes and sizes. From large folios for churches, down to small pocket editions called octavos. Protestants understand the Bible to contain everything necessary for salvation. In addition, they view preaching as a vital means by which the message of the Bible is explained. St Michael's pulpit was designed with all these considerations in mind. Firstly, there's a saying that preachers stand six feet above contradiction. This is emphasised by the elevated and very visible position of any speaker in this pulpit. Secondly, the ingenious addition of a piece of wood above my head, called a sounding board, helped the voice of the minister carry to the back of the room. There were no microphones back then. And thirdly, the hourglass ensured that the congregation would not get less than a full hour of worthy oratory. Such was the importance of imparting the word of God through effective preaching. The pulpit in St Michael's dominates a corner of the church. It was installed to replace the medieval Catholic decoration which flourished before the Reformation. Later generations, however, would learn to reconcile word and art and to recover a role for colour and image 
in sharing religious truth. As we see when we explore Victorian stained glass in another episode. <laughs>